Hello and welcome to the Irish Aesthete. For some time now, I've been discussing various aspects of the life of one of 18th century Ireland's most colourful characters, Frederick Harvey. Frederick Harvey, simultaneously Bishop of Derry and Earl of Bristol, that is. And you'll remember in the last episode, I discussed the busy life of one of his daughters, Lady Elizabeth Foster. In 1776, still not quite aged 18, she had married John Thomas Foster, a well-connected MP in the Irish House of Commons. Within five years, the couple had had three children, but following the death of their infant daughter, Lady Elizabeth told her husband she no longer wanted to live with him and left Mr Foster for good. Now, for a woman to take such a step in the 18th century was extremely radical because she, her possessions, and even her children were regarded as being the property of her spouse. In this instance, Mr Foster exacted his revenge by forbidding Lady Elizabeth to see her two young sons, then aged just three and not even yet one, and they remained in Ireland, living in his home, Rosie Park, in County Louth. It was only some 14 years later, after John Foster's death, that the children were reunited with their mother. By that time, she had long been living with her best friend Georgina, Duchess of Devonshire, and more to the point, she had long been the mistress of Georgina's husband, the fifth Duke of Devonshire, with whom she had had two further children, another son and a daughter. In 1796, having lost their father, the two Foster boys were now brought to Devonshire House in London and installed there as part of a complex menage, along with their half-siblings, that is, Lady Elizabeth's two children with the Duke, and those of the Duke and Duchess. So what became of the two young men once they reached adulthood? Well, the elder one, Frederick Thomas Foster, who inherited the Irish estates, seemed to have lived most of his life over here, although he did serve as an MP for an English borough in the Houses of Parliament at Westminster for six years from 1812 onwards. He would eventually die unmarried, meaning the estates passed to his sibling and his sibling's offspring. That younger sibling, Augustus John Foster, lived a more public life than his elder brother, enjoying a long and relatively successful diplomatic career. For a short period, he served as Britain's Minister Plenipotentiary in the United States, as well as spending longer spells in the same role in Denmark and the Kingdom of Sardinia. Alas, his life came to an end unhappily in 1848. After a spell of illness, he was tormented by religious doubts and cut his own throat. Augustus John Foster had three sons, the eldest of which, Sir Frederick George Foster, inherited both his father's baronetcy and his uncle's County Louth estate. A few years after his death, this statue was erected in his memory in R.D. and dedicated to one of the best landlords that ever lived. Sir Frederick's younger brother was called Vera Foster and he's remembered today as a great philanthropist in 19th century Ireland. For many years he worked to improve the circumstances of Irish men and women obliged by poverty to emigrate to the United States. But within this country, he also took up the cause of better education, raising funds for the construction of hundreds of school buildings and producing a wide range of textbooks that were used throughout Ireland. As a result, when he died in Belfast in 1900, he was completely penniless. Now, I'm conscious that I have said very little about the Foster family home, originally called Rosie Park, but later renamed Glyde Court. It had started out as a long, classical, two-storey house, but in the late 1860s it was made over in the fashionable Tudor Beethan style to the designs of architect George Coppinger Ashlin. And in the next episode, I'll tell you a little bit more about Glyde Court and about a famous portrait painted of its owners in the house at the start of the last century. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Institute. Goodbye.